Hello, welcome to uh, my study in my new house, my new study. Um, I moved house in the summer and uh, I have to say it was probably the, the worst three months of my life. It was um, ne never move house, a terrible thing to do. Um, this was supposed to be my year off, uh, believe it or not. Uh, my uh, année sabbatique, as the French would say, my sabbatical year. Um, and no, I haven't written anything this year. I wrote two books last year to make up for that. I haven't written anything this year, but it's been a busy, busy year. Um, I mean, as a year for all of us, it's been um, probably, um, well, the, the Queen once described uh, her year as being an Annus Horribilis. Well, I think this was pretty much an Annus Horribilis for everybody this year. I mean, so many people we lost this year in entertainment and uh, the arts and musicians and notable figures around the world. We had political upheavals, Brexit, uh, the American presidential election. Um, it's a kind of year that I think probably most of us would like to put behind us. In actual fact, it wasn't too bad a year for me. Um, as I said, and right, I had a horrible period when I was actually moving house. The process is terrible. Um, but uh, I, I did a lot of traveling. Uh, I did um, promotional events in Spain, in uh, the UK, uh, in France, here in France. Uh, that's where I am at the moment. Um, uh, I went to Australia, New Zealand, uh, the United States, um, and uh, the UK again in uh, August, September, Edinburgh Book Festival, um, Sky Book Festival. Um, here I am, uh, back in France. I uh, usually like to spend some time down in Spain during the winter. I have a little apartment down in the south. Uh, but for one reason or another, it wasn't possible this year. Um, but I'm quite pleased for the chance to actually spend some time in the new house and get to know my new study. It's, um, it's uh, you know, you have to feel comfortable in the place that you write. And uh, so I'm, I'm just bedding in, if you like, getting comfortable and preparing for writing the next book, which will come up sometime in the not too distant future, certainly in the next few months. Um, behind me, you can see various things. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is a, an old fireplace, and uh, I have uh, put some of my awards up here. Um, this one here, um, if it doesn't offend anybody, uh, was um, one for the Black House at the uh, Le Havre Festival uh, in the north of France. Um, the, the, the whiskey there, um, that was the uh, Scottish um, Award for the best crime novel of the year, Scottish crime novel of the year at Bloody Scotland, um, and just there, that 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 one there is my very first award, which is called the Prix Intramuros, um, and that was awarded by prisoners in French prisons, uh, who were presented with a short list of books to read in groups, and um, they picked mine. Uh, it was Snakehead, the fourth of the China thrillers, um, which was uh, rather fun. Um, the Dagger. Um, that was the ITV Crime and Thriller Awards. Um, I have various certificates up on the wall as well. That there was my very first award. It was a journalist award. I won it when I was 21 years old, and that was the um, Scottish Young Journalist of the Year Award, the Fraser Award. Um, so that goes back a while. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, we're coming to the end of 2016. 2017 looms ahead. Um, the first thing good about it for me is that uh, Cast Iron will come out on the 12th of January. Um, Cast Iron is the sixth and final book in the Enzo series. Uh, some of you may not have read the other books in the series. Enzo McLeod is one of my very favourite characters. He, he um, bears quite a considerable resemblance to myself in many ways, um, though not, not in all ways, I have to say. Um, he lives in France. He's a gentleman of a certain age. At, at least when I started writing the series, he and I were of similar ages. Um, I had a ponytail at that point. Um, he still does. <laughs> he, he hasn't shed the old uh, hippie image quite yet, as I have done. Um, uh, I am no forensics uh, expert. He is. Um, and he has been spending the last well, nearly 10 years, uh, well, in fact, more than 10 years, 
solving the, the seven most notorious unresolved uh, murders in France, cold cases, and he's using new science to do that. Um, now, the series was very nearly stillborn when I first suggested it, way back in uh, about 2005, uh, to my then publisher. <coughs> I, I had um, I'd come fresh from my extreme disappointment at the fact that every publisher in the UK had turned down what I had thought at the time was my best book, uh, The Black House, which has subsequently turned into a a fairly massive bestseller, um, but it, in 2005, when I first wrote it, nobody wanted to publish it. And I, I, I was um, upset, to say the least, um, and, I, and I, I thought I would like to write something, because publishers seemed to think it wasn't commercial enough, I, 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 The Black House, and, and, and so I, you know, I, I thought, well, I, you know, let, let's write something that people are reading. Um, Crime, cold cases, forensics, pathology, these are all things that, that, that people enjoy and sell very well. Uh, but I wanted to have fun with it too. I wanted to have a character who was a bit different. And so I created Enzo McLeod, expat Scott living in France, um, with a very complex uh, personal history and love life. Um, and uh, I, 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 start, I started writing those. Well, that actually, I, I, the very first thing I did was I put together a... A, a kind of breakdown format, if you like, for a series of books, seven books it was going to be. Um, and the, 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 the principle behind that was that um, a Parisian journalist called Roger Raffin had written this book, factual book, outlining the details of the seven most notorious unsolved crimes in recent French history. Um, and during a, a, a dinner party in which he'd imbibed a little too much wine, Enzo had got involved in a bet with his local police chief and the local prefet um, that uh, he could resolve these applying new science. Um, of course, in the cold light of day um, and a, a, a 2,000 euro uh, pot on the table, uh, which was a considerable amount of money for Enzo, who at this point was teaching biology in a university in Toulouse, um, he, he, he was faced with the cold realisation that he had to resolve these cold cases or he was going to lose two grand. Um, and so the, the adventure began at that point. And now I, I, I kind of outlined this in a kind of um, proposal document to my then publisher, along with a kind of sketch of what those... Uh, subsequent stories might be. Um, and my editor at the time read it and said, no, 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 Enzo McLeod is far too old to be the central character in a, a series. Uh, and I, I, I kind of took offence at that because Enzo was my age and, and that was like saying to me, you're too old to write this. Um, kind of got my goat a bit. So I went away and, and wrote the first book um, just on spec. I had no contract for it extraordinary people and um, th that was a novel concept uh, the, the, the whole book it was very different from anything I'd written before I knew roughly what the shape of the story was going to be but I needed to have five sets of clues that Enzo was going to resolve using his whiteboard um, which is his process for writing up uh, his thoughts and connections on a, on a whiteboard mounted on the wall um, I needed to come up with these five sets of clues and and so I asked my wife if she would come up with clues that I would then have to resolve. Now, my wife Janice is a very smart lady. She has an IQ of 167. And she came up with, I didn't know what kind of clues she was going to come up with. And, and they all turned out to be actually items of one kind or another. Um, you know, like a, a, a brooch in the shape of a bee, uh, a scallop shell, various things like that. And, and, I, and I had no idea what the connection was between any of these. But I had to sit down and try and work out what they meant, what they represented, how they connected to one another. Um, and so the, pr the process that I went through in cracking those codes, uh, solving those clues, led me to various conclusions in resolving the murder. And, and these provided the steps that Enzo would then take in his investigation. So in a way, it was a kind of collaborative effort, certainly in terms of the clues. Obviously, I wrote the book. Um, 
it you, the, the, the frustrating thing is that you know it then followed the same route as the Black House. It got submitted to all the publishing houses in London, and it got turned down by everybody. Um, and I got pretty desperate at the time, <laughs> wondering what on earth was going to happen. Um, and as luck would have it, I my China thrillers, which were the previous books that I'd written, six China thrillers, had been taken up by an American publisher. And I, when I showed the Enzo uh, idea and that first manuscript for Extraordinary People to the publisher, um, they went for it. They bought it. Um, and and so uh, Enzo started to be published in the United States. I was living in France. I came from the UK, but I was being published in the States. Uh, my original idea for it, because Enzo has this um, uh, condition um, w- w- which leaves him with a white stripe through his dark hair, um, and it, uh, 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 it, his nickname at school was Magpie. And so that, that was the nickname that had stuck with him. And Magpie had led me to that kind of rhyme that exists, you know, about magpies, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, etc. Um, and so that was originally what how I was going to title the books. Um, but it turned out that, that my American publisher had somebody else already using those titles. So uh, I couldn't do it. Um, But anyway, the books came out one by one in America. They were uh, well received, Um, but I still didn't have a publisher in in the UK. I didn't have a publisher in France. And then, of course, the whole uh, Black House thing blew up. The French bought that. It became a bestseller in France. They sold it around the world. It got published in the UK. Uh, It turned into a trilogy, which became a massive international bestseller. And you know, I, I got totally caught up in all that. I had contracts to write books, the, the three books in the trilogy, then uh, another three books. Um, and poor old Enzo, I'd written five of those stories. Enzo kind of got lost in the mist. I had actually allocated at one point early on a space to write what was going to be the sixth and final book, which would resolve the last two murders. Um but I, I, I got into a dispute uh, with my then American publisher and th- that led into a six-month wrangle, uh, which did not end well. Um, and m- my window for writing that book got lost. And there simply wasn't another window of opportunity in the subsequent years for me to be able to do that until last year. And because I decided to take a, a sabbatical year this year, I... Um, uh, I thought, I'm going to have to write two books. So last year, um, I wrote, at the beginning of the year, I wrote Coffin Road, uh, which came out at the beginning of this year. Um, and uh, I knew that I was going to have to write a second book. I mean, to writing two books in a year is quite, um, it's quite an undertaking. Uh, I knew I was going to have to write a second one um, towards the end of the year. Um, and I'd already decided that 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 second book was going to be the final Enzo because there were a lot of people out there who'd read the the previous five who wanted to know how it finished, uh, wanted a resolution to Enzo. Um, And so uh, I had to go back to Enzo after a break of, I don't know, five, six years since I'd written the previous uh, fifth book in the series. And... It was interesting. I was worried that going back uh, would be um, a problem, that, that, that I would have lost my sense of Enzo and, and that character and the whole ethos of the series. Um, so I went back and I reread all the books. Um, I have to say I quite enjoyed reading them. Um, and I got to the end of it and, and I worked on my story which was loosely based on the original idea I'd had for the final book, but it, it changed considerably at that point. Um, but I was still nervous about actually writing him, sitting down and writing Enzo again after all this time. Uh, um, I'm much to my surprise when I actually did start the writing. It just, it was like, you know, we'd never been apart. <laughs> we were old friends who picked up the same conversation. Um, and uh, me and Enzo just sailed through the book together, um, and I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, really enjoyed um, getting back with him again, because one of the reasons I'd wanted to write this series, which is lighter in tone than 
uh, you know, the Black House and, and, and the whole Lewis trilogy. There's more humour in it, for example. I would wanted to cheer myself up after the disappointment of uh, not getting a publisher for the Black House. I'd wanted to write something that was not only would have popular appear, appeal, but that would uh, lift my spirits, that I would enjoy writing um, and get fun out of. Um, and so uh, I did that. In fact, <laughs> one American reviewer actually um, described Enzo as being um, a cross between uh, uh, James Bond and uh, uh, Inspector Clouseau. Um, <laughs> and in some ways that's right, because Enzo's not, he, he's, no, he's no hero, he's cerebral, uh, and he's clever, um, but when it comes to the, 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 the mechanics of dealing with uh, people who break the law, he, he's not necessarily that good at it. Um, so he gets himself into various difficult situations. Um, so here we go. I, 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 wrote the, I wrote this sixth and final book. Um, we called it Cast Iron um, for reasons that become clear when you read it. Um, and its setting is France, of course, again. Its uh, setting is uh, largely the west of France, Bordeaux and uh, slightly to the east of Bordeaux, and then down to the southwest near Biarritz um, and Paris, of course, and Enzo's hometown of Cahors, which is in the lot, which is the same department where I live. Um, and uh, I, I have to say that, that, that while I really enjoyed writing it, it was terribly sad finishing it because I was aware that this was the final Enzo book. I wasn't going to be writing any more Enzo's. Um, and so I was saying goodbye to him. And I'd, I'd only just kind of reacquainted myself with him after five years. Um, and here we were saying goodbye again. So it was bittersweet. Um, I was pleased to be able to go back and write him again and deliver this final book to readers who'd followed Enzo faithfully. Um, but I was sad to say goodbye to him. Um, at the same time, you know, when I wrote this book, I was very much aware that there would quite possibly be a number of people who had not read Enzo prior to this publication. Um, so I, 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 have, I have endeavoured to make this work absolutely as a standalone book, uh, which, although it takes you to the end of the tale, hopefully will uh, whet your appetite for the rest and, and that you'll be interested to go back and read the other books if you haven't already read them. Um, so that's Enzo and that's Cast Iron um, I will be touring the UK uh, in January the book comes out on the 12th I come over to the UK I think on the 9th uh, and I will be touring around the country I'm going to Perth and Edinburgh and Glasgow and Manchester Norwich, Oxford, London um, uh, and I will be doing various interviews uh, at the same time. Um, so maybe if you don't catch me at one of those events, you might catch one of the radio interviews around the country. Um, but I sincerely hope you'll be able to make it along. Uh, you can find a list of, of all those events on my website. Um, and uh, when I finish that, I'll be coming home and I'll be seriously putting my head down to start work on the next book. Um, now I've already done some preliminary work on that. I've conducted a number of interviews. I'm, I'm in the middle of reading uh, various books I've collected on the topic and topics that are uh, envisaged for this final book, not final book, uh, next book. Um, and uh, I will probably be going back to Scotland in uh, late March for a research trip uh, for the new book, which will be set largely, once again, up in the islands. Oh, in case you notice a sudden change in the light here, I just went and lowered the blind because the sun was streaming in and uh, I, I could see on the screen that it was burning out my face. So you don't want to burn out me. I'm certainly not burned out in the writing sense. Um, anyway, I think I've probably told you enough about all of this. Um, uh, maybe just to whet your appetite one little bit, I should tell you that uh, uh, one of the characters in the book is a, 
uh, a serial killer who's spending uh, life in prison. Uh, and this is a high security prison in the southwest of France near the Pyrenees. Um, I, I went down to visit the prison. Um, and I wanted to get into the mentality of somebody serving a long-term prison sentence. Uh, I didn't want to interview the character who had inspired, the real-life character who had inspired the story, who was a, who was a serial killer in France, um, uh, because I don't believe in giving these people publicity and, and or certainly not um, giving them the, the sense that they're some kind of celebrity. Um, uh, but I needed an insight into this mentality of the lifer. Um, and I, I suddenly remembered that, you know, 35, 36, 37 years ago, I had conducted an interview uh, with um, an armed robber called John McVicker, uh, who uh, in, in the early 70s had been uh, dubbed by uh, Scotland Yard as public enemy number one. Um, and uh, uh, what, what made him so... Um, famous was he kept breaking out of prison. They made a movie about him in 1980 with their Roger Daltrey playing the part. Um, anyway, I interviewed him, I think, either at the end of 79 or the beginning of uh, 1980 at his mother's house, house in North London um, for a book idea I had at the time. Now, I never actually came to write that book, but I still had my notes and my tape recordings of the interview that I did with him and my very just distinct recollection of them. So I went back and revisited all that and that then gave me the insight and inspiration into the, the, the thinking and the mind of this character who's serving life in prison. Um, so that's just a little insight. Um, anyway, uh, if, I, if I don't see you um, round and about on my UK tour, I hope to meet up with you on my Facebook page. So uh, all that's left is for me to issue a very very happy new year and let's hope that 2017 turns out to be a much better year than its predecessor. Bye.